Hi, my name is Angel Rodriguez, and uh, I'm one of the founders here at OSO. And we've designed this table based on the designs of Erhard Wielen, and a table made also by uh, Lenarts. Its main design principle is that it uses no power at all, and it has fixed steps so that you can calibrate high gain instruments and low gain instruments. Uh, very easy to use. The, the best part about the table is the, the software that comes with it that uh, takes standard mini C files, there's no conversions needed, and gives you the absolute gain at the flat part of your transfer function. So if you'd like to buy one, uh, write the email address here on the video, or give us a call also at the, at the video's end, and we'll be glad to talk about it with you. Thanks. My name is Brandon Christensen, and I'm the director here at OSOP. I'm going to show you how to use the OSOP calibration table to obtain the gain of your accelerometer or broadband or short period seismometer. And so the OSOP calibration table can be used to obtain the gain of seismometers like the STS-2 or the Nanometrics Trillium Compact. It can also be used to obtain the gain of a short period seismometer like the OSOP-6 Aola. The calibration table can also be used for accelerometers like Titan SMA. Before you can begin calibrating, the first thing you need to do is level the table. We've provided a hole in the top of the table that you can look through to see the bubble level below. And then three different feet that you can use to level the table. Once the table is level, you want to take your instrument, place it on the top of the table, and then level the instrument. In the case of instruments similar to the Nanometrics Trillium Compact that have three feet, you want to use the lines we provided on the top of the table to position the seismometer, and then the seismometer remains firmly positioned on the top of the table. The next thing you want to do is turn on the dial and zero it out. To begin the calibration, we need to turn the digital dial on and then zero the dial. And it's important to remember after the calibration is done to shut the dial off. The OSOP calibration table has a butterfly that controls the amount of vertical motion seen at the table. The butterfly has a series of steps that allows the end user to choose uh, the, the amount of motion that he or she wants. We recommend shipping and transporting the calibration table with the butterfly in the lock position. Once you have the table level, your seismometer level, the dial has been zeroed and you've chosen the position on the butterfly, you're ready to begin calibrating. Now obviously your sensor would be connected in real time to or it would be saving data locally. Generally what we do here at OSOP is we connect the seismometers to our internal network, the data enters the Seedlink server, from there it enters SASCOM's SDS database, and later we extract the data to be able to process it with the OSOP Cal program. Now there's a few important things to note here. If you're using a short period seismometer, you can generally put it on the table, level it, zero, and choose your position, and you're ready to go right away. If you're using a more sensitive instrument that has longer period measurement, like the Nanometrics Trillium Compact or the STS-2, after you set the seismometer on the table, you want to give it some time to settle down. Once the seismometer is settled down and you're ready to begin the, the calibration, there's a lever here that allows you to move the table up and down. And so we recommend moving into the up position, holding it for two seconds, and then dropping it into the down position, holding it for two seconds, and then moving the table up and down with that rhythm 15 to 25 times. Once you've finished, you can use the program that we provided in the table. It's called the OSOP Cal program. And that program will help you to determine the gain of your instrument. And if you have the instrument response file, 
it will compare the gain that you've determined using the OSOP calibration table to the gain contained within the instrument response file. Next, I'm going to show you how to use the OSOP calibration table to determine the gain of the horizontal components of your accelerometer or your seismometer. So the first step is the same as before. You level the table, zero out the dial, and then we've provided a stand on the side here. This also has a level, so you'll level the stand. And then you'll take your horizontal table extension, which has two points here, and you'll set that on the table in these grooves. Then you'll lower the table down onto the stand. And now the table's level, the stand is level, and so your horizontal extension is level. And you'll take your seismometer, in this case we use the nanometric strillium compact. You position the seismometer onto this portion of the table. And then obviously this will be connected to your digitizer, and then you're ready to begin. The process is the same as before. Using the butterfly here, you'll lift up, hold for two seconds, drop down, hold for two seconds. You'll do that 15 to 25 times. During that process, when you're going up and down, you want to be looking at the dial and remembering what the maximum displacement was. That maximum displacement will be an input parameter into the OSOP Cal program that will allow you to determine the gain for the motion that you saw. Now, because we're working in the horizontal, we recommend calibrating at a very low level in the butterfly. Use the minimum displacement possible. If you need to move the calibration table around the laboratory or pack it to bring it into the field, we encourage you not to grab the calibration table here at the top. You should grab the calibration table from the bottom and then lift it up to transport it. Now remember prior to transport that we recommend that the butterfly be in the locked position. If you're interested in acquiring a table of your own or you have additional questions, feel free to email us at the address below, sales at osop.com.pa.